Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you guys are all doing well. We're out at the basin today, super late season. We're gonna do a quick binding comparison, doing a side-by-side -side test. Same day comparison of the Union Falcor, Union Atlas, and Union Strata. We're just heading up right now. Let's get it going. So we're heading up to the top for our first laps of the day. I want to start the video off just going over a few things all the bindings are going to have in common. First off, you're going to get a lifetime warranty on the base plate and heel cup on all Union bindings. You get an adjustable heel cup so you can make sure your boot is centered in the binding. Try to eliminate heel and toe drag as much as possible. Toolless adjustment on all the straps. So if you have to make any adjustments out on hill in the field, you can do that quickly without having to worry about a screwdriver. Also going to get durable magnesium buckles. Also want to let you guys know that I've spent a good amount of time on all these bindings. I rode the Stratas for literally two whole seasons. I spent two whole seasons on the Atlas uh, since they redesigned them these last two seasons and uh, quite a bit of time on the Falcors as well, although those are the bindings I've ridden the least. So I'm going to start the day off riding the Falcors and just kind of check in and give some feedback throughout the day here for you guys. Probably we'll mix in some clips uh, from other times I've ridden these bindings as well but uh for now let's get some laps going all right and we got the park coming up right here got a little pond skim coming up big one's not open yet so the snow is just super heavy slushy mashed potatoes today definitely pushing back a lot which is honestly great for a binding test because get a lot of forces thrown back into the bindings see how much support they offer all right we got a little jump coming up here that gap is pretty serious today So first thing I notice on the Falcors is the high back. Very responsive. You can really notice it on heel side turns. It doesn't really give at all on the way back. They've got that carbon fiber structure in the middle there. So they're super lightweight and also very, very strong. Really responsive in turns as well. You can feel that support on the outside of the boot. Not really getting that much play out of the chassis as well. The Falcors do run the mini disc base plate, so you can get a little bit more flex, but they combine that with a stiffer chassis. So overall, pretty responsive feel to it. Stoke so far, definitely solid for these conditions out here, pushing around this heavy snow. These bindings are feeling pretty comfortable out here as well. As far as the straps go, all the straps are pretty similar across these three bindings. So that's not gonna be a huge factor if you're deciding between the three. And they do run the vapor light bushings padding underneath the binding as well. So they're pretty damp, they're pretty comfortable. And uh, even though they are a more responsive, stiffer binding, I don't really think they compromise comfort too much. The most noticeable thing is that high back. You can really feel that support in your boot, uh, especially, you know, when you're carving or any situation, you know, where you're leaning into those high backs, making turns on landings, all that kind of stuff, which is great. You know, that's kind of why you would go for this binding for those more high impact situations, free riding. And I mean, they're Travis Rice's binding. So they're designed to kind of combine that free ride freestyle spirit in the binding. So overall, definitely very responsive, very supportive, but still pretty comfortable as well. Going pretty good so far. Let's keep going. Oh, quick little feel on the rail. Even though the high backs are pretty stiff on the Falcors, still pretty comfortable in the park. A little more effort to get those tweaks going, those shifties for front lips and things like that, but not too bad. We're gonna swap out to the Atlas. 
All right, heading up to feel out the Atlas. And I think there's two things that are gonna be the most noticeable compared to the Falcor on these. So first off, it's rated as a little bit of a softer binding by Union. So it'll be interesting to see how that feels with the full size base plate versus the mini disc that the Falcor runs. The high backs are also softer and they also run a different bushing. So the Atlas was completely redesigned a couple years ago. It's pretty cool uh, the way they have that all laid up with the layers. So definitely check that out. I'll have everything linked down in the description, but they run the Vapor Light HD bushing. So that's gonna be a higher density material, gonna be able to stand up to like higher impact situations a little bit better, at least just by the description. So we'll feel that out right now and see how it is. Oh, loose. All right, so first thing I noticed right away stepping on the Atlas off the Falcor, they're way more comfortable. I think a lot of that just has to do with the softer high back. You don't notice it as much. You get more tweakability as well. It's a lot easier to get some flex laterally in these guys. And still pretty responsive, but not as responsive as the Falcor. Switch it up this time, hopefully. All right, last pair of bindings for the summary here, heading up on the Stratas. So these are gonna be getting even softer than the Atlas, the chassis, and the high back, and they run the mini disc base plate. So these should be the most tweakable out of the three, and they should be the most damp as well. They have this huge oversized vapor light bushing. They call it the OTE vapor light, I believe. So uh, these are gonna be the most freestyle focused binding. The Atlas is the most all mountain, just do everything focused kind of binding. And then the Falcor is that free ride freestyle kind of binding. So we'll get these laps going, do a little bit of commentary on the way down, and then wrap things up with a summary and kind of talk about how all three felt here at the end here. All right, coming back into Snake Run. Yeah, I went too low this time, but we'll still hit this guy. Oh! It's so mashed potato-y, it's gnarly. Yep. You can feel it tweaking more on these for sure, getting way out laterally. I'm gonna go front lip and then front lip same way. We'll try to get that down. Ben, we got it! Oh! You definitely gotta lean further into it before it starts to really flex the board. Very noticeable compared to the Falcor. Let's go front board to front blunt, same way this time if we can get it. Oh, brother. Front blunt did not work out that time. Don't do it. I'm not going to make it. I made it. All right, so first impressions on the Strata. By far, definitely the most comfortable binding out of the three, and you get the most play and tweakability out of these as well. You get a lot of lateral movement, definitely a significant step down performance wise for carving compared to the Falcor and even the Atlas. This heavy slushy snow is able to push you around a little bit more, but that's actually kind of nice for freestyle stuff. Like in the park doing that front lip, I was able to get the board poked out with way less effort and definitely feels pretty cozy as a freestyle binding. Less responsive all around, more give in the high back as well, but uh, very, very comfortable. It was hard to tell a significant difference in dampening between the Atlas and the Falcor, but it's for sure noticeable on the Strata. These bindings are super comfortable, super cushy, flexy, tweakable. Uh, I think that's, that's kind of the overall vibe I'm getting from the Strata here.
All right, made it back to the house. Couple of things. First off, I was riding the Kazu Edition Atlas out there today, and this does have a different heel strap than the standard Atlas. This is the strap that's gonna be on the Falcor and the Strata for 21-22. The strap that comes on the regular Atlas is gonna be this guy right here. And I did spend a full season riding these. It's still a very solid ankle strap. They're all 3D molded, ergonomic, very comfortable. I think this one is just maybe a little bit more flexy, get a little more lateral play out of it, but overall very similar, just a little bit of a different design. Another thing for 2122 is that they are updating the toe strap on the Atlas, which I'm stoked on. I found that this one didn't really fit perfectly over my boot, uh, but the new straps are just a little bit narrower and I think mold over the toe of your boot just a little bit better. So that's always good just to get a little more response like a gas pedal on the front there when you're going to your toe edge. Other than that, there were a couple other things I wanted to call out that all of these bindings have in common. First off is gonna be a canted footbed. So if you look at the footbed here, you'll see it's just at a very slight angle. Just another ergonomic feature, gonna make these a little bit more comfortable and a little bit easier on your knees. Another thing I found not everyone's familiar with about union bindings is that the toe strap actually has two positions that can be adjusted while the bindings are mounted on the board. So I've had this come in handy swapping boards with friends, like say we have, you know, a size, size and a half different boot size. You can actually push this toe strap down and bring it closer and lock it into the tighter position or push it down and pull it forward and have it in the looser position. So that's pretty cool too. That's gonna be across all union bindings. And then the last thing is the most common complaint for union bindings is these screws right here on the ankle strap. In years past, they used to come loose over time but Union has fixed it across the line. They've added some mechanism in the washer here. Not sure what it's called. If you know about that, let us know in the comments. But basically it doesn't allow the screw to back out at all, even you know as you're twisting and using the binding over time. Um, I've gone like 30 days easily and still had the straps feel just as tight. You know, I only look at that a couple times a season. So if you're worried about that, that's no longer an issue on these guys. And jumping back into the comparison, I'll start with the Falcors and kind of go down the line like we did on the mountain today. I found the Falcors to be the most responsive out of the bunch. Uh, they are the stiffest in my opinion, especially the high back. You can get a decent bit of flex uh, twisting the high back, but if you try to push back to get that heel response for carves, it is very, very stiff. And these are also the lightest binding out of the group by far. I think the Falcors are the lightest, then the Strata and the Atlas is actually the heaviest if that's something that you care about. Looking at the dampening features on the top of the footbed that actually makes contact with your boot, it is a little bit of a softer material, but still a pretty dense foam-like material overall. And then on the bottom, it's almost like a rubberized kind of material, definitely way denser. And I think the idea with that is to be able to stand up better to those higher impact situations, you know, maybe going fast through variable snow conditions, being able to take those hard hits, still be responsive and help out your feet and your knees a little bit. But with the mini disc, you can still get a little bit of play in the chassis, which is fun when you're doing more freestyle leaning stuff. But at the end of the day, this is still gonna come through with the response and support when you need it. Over the last few years, the Atlas has become my personal favorite from Union as a do-it-all binding. This is the one I've been using to test all the boards over the last two seasons. And one of my favorite features on the Atlas is the redesigned dampening system here. So on the bottom, it is a very dense kind of rubberized material like the Falcor are gonna come through in those higher impact situations. You've got a little bit of foam under the toe here, some material underfoot where your boot makes contact as well that's a bit more rigid and then this crazy like rubber pad on the heel here to really protect your heels if you're coming down hard or going through some choppy snow, banging your heels up. So I really like that about the Atlas, even though it is a little bit heavier, gonna come through with some good dampening while still being very responsive and not really limiting you at all there. Same thing for the Falcor. I think that those more dense dampening materials really help maintain that responsiveness, but still come through and help absorb a lot of vibrations. Another thing I really like about the Atlas is the high back. 
It's somewhat of an asymmetrical high back, so you get a little bit of a thicker material on the outside here, which is gonna give you more response when you're carving and uh, exploring the mountain, doing things like that, and a little bit more flex and play on the inside, which helps you out when you're trying to tweak things out, whether that's a grab or trying to poke out a rail trick or whatever the situation may be. So you get a little bit of both worlds built into the design here, and that's definitely something that I think adds to the comfort on the Atlas and just makes it a little bit more versatile as well. And lastly, we got the Strata. This is my go-to recommendation if you're looking for comfort as a top priority. These things are super comfortable and just a super cush ride as well. For me, the biggest standout on these is gonna be that Vapor Light footbed. It's just super cush on the top here, really nice, uh, softer, shock absorbent material right underfoot. It's a little bit more firm in the heels and on the toe. And like I said, this thing is layered, so definitely check that out if you're interested on the actual construction. But underneath, it's a more rubberized material, a little bit more dense, gonna help mellow out the harder hits, and the softer material is gonna help mellow out everything else. So these are definitely more of a freestyle-focused binding, and are really gonna help you out if you're doing park laps, just getting those repeated hits that you'll get in the park. But as a bonus, they just help make things more comfortable everywhere else on the mountain as well. The high back is gonna be a little bit more flexy left to right for tweaks compared to the Atlas, uh, getting significantly softer compared to the Falcor, but still pretty responsive front to back. So pretty solid, even though overall the binding is a little bit softer. The chassis is softer, you got the mini disc as well. So these are gonna be the surfiest and loosest bindings out of the bunch, but like I told you guys before, I rode these for two whole seasons doing everything. They still hold up really well as an all mountain binding, but with an emphasis on comfort. If you are that more freestyle focused rider or you do just want something that's very comfortable, I'd point you towards the Strata. All right, I think that's gonna do it for this video. If I left something out, let me know down in the comments. I'll try to get down there and answer any questions you guys have as well. But hopefully this video was helpful for you guys, especially if you're choosing between these three bindings specifically. If you wanna read more about them and more about the tech in them, I'll have them all linked down in the description. So please go down there and check that out. Drop a like if you got some value and subscribe for more snowboard videos. I appreciate it guys. See you next time.